Hello, welcome. In this lecture, I will talk about neural networks. In the first half of the course, uh, we cover a lot about neural networks and deep learning, uh, where we use neural networks to do supervised learning. In this lecture, we will consider neural networks in the aspect of function approximators to solve inverse problems. As we mentioned in the function inverse problems, uh, you have an unknown function, kappa x or kappa x u, uh, depending on whether you want your unknown function to be dependent on your state variables. And one idea to solve this kind of inverse problem is to parameterize uh, your unknown function using uh, a family of functions uh, where your parameterized parameter is theta. And so you reduce your infinite dimensional problem to a finite dimensional problem where you just want to estimate a parameter theta instead of uh, a function which is pretty abstract and uh, you will look for solutions in an infinite dimensional function space. So let's consider some concrete examples. The simplest uh, example is the piecewise linear function where you parameterize your unknown function using piecewise linear functions. Piecewise linear functions is uh, the building bricks for all finite elemental analysis, where you use a lot of piecewise linear or piecewise polynomials to approximate your unknown functions in a weak form uh, of partial differential equations. And uh, simply put, it's a linear combination, a combination of a piecewise linear functions, where in 2D you just have a head functions, you want 1D. Uh, you just like uh, uh, have, have non-zero non linear functions uh, on each interval. And the parameter here is a bunch of CIs, well, C1, C2 to Cn, uh, which is an n-dimensional vector. So you, you reduce your infinite dimensional problem to finite dimensional problem, where you just want to estimate those CI parameters. Another popular uh, function approximator is the radial basis functions. Uh, it is very popular uh, in scientific computing and the computer vision, uh, where you use uh, radial basis functions as phi i uh, instead of a piecewise linear functions, uh, and use a linear combination of those functions to approximate a kappa x. So in this case, uh, you, uh, your unknown parameter is also n-dimensional CI parameters. Uh, you reduce uh, infinite dimensional function inverse problem to a finite dimensional parameter inverse problem. There are many other classical function approximators. Uh, most of the classical function approximators are generalized linear models. By generalized linear models, I mean the uh, linear compilation of basis functions uh, in this form, uh, where the unknowns is uh, a bunch of parameters, C1 to Cn, and it is a linear combination of the basis functions phi i. In the examples uh, in piecewise linear functions, phi i is just the piecewise linear functions. And then in the radial basis functions, phi i is just the radial basis functions. And there are many other cases as well. For example, the polynomial regression. Uh, and in this case, phi i is simply x uh, to the i minus y power. And in chip shape polynomials, uh, you, uh, phi i x is just the chip shift polynomials, and this is usually used in, uh, like, uh, in, in something like a spectrum method. And also you have a beast bias and a rational basis functions, and, uh, and this also uh, form a large of uh, scientific computing uh, techniques for solving partial differential equations or many other similar problems. So what about neural networks? If you look at the neural networks in the view of function approximators, it is not a linear combination of a basis functions. Instead, it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a composition of linear functions and nonlinear activation functions. So that's quite different from the classical function approximators. And in this, uh, in, in this case, the unknown parameter theta uh, is just a B1, W1, B2, W2, and or uh, and you collect all the weights and the biases and you form a long vector theta and this theta can be very large uh, for neural networks 